pre-event to pre-removal contract, Mr. Tyler. Yes, sir. The lead provision, I'll just do ENF at the same time. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, ENF. <coughs> so, um, earlier, uh, Miles County issued RFPs for uh, disaster debris removal and also for the monitoring of that removal company. Um, those are the companies that we use there in Hurricane Adalia. Uh, the reason we issued the RFP now is one of the things we found out during the hurricane was that none of the cities had a, had a, uh, a contract with um, any vendor and that presented some challenges with FEMA. So we issued an updated RFP which will allow the cities, should they choose, they have the option now of adopting their own contracts so that um, hopefully they won't be in the same predicament. Uh, but after um, we received all of the uh, proposals back, uh, we, all of those were evaluated by myself as well as um, Robin from Our Public Works, City of Austin Public Works, and City of Ohio Public Works. Um, and when we scored those, it wasn't just based on price, it was based on the price, their past experience, um, all the, the equipment and resources that they would bring to bear. And um, so our recommendation now, we typically um, like to have three contractors for the debris removal. That way, if we call our primary vendor and for some reason they're not able to, uh, they're tied up elsewhere or not able to get here, then we have backups that we can call and we already have contracts in place. Um, <coughs> so we're, for the debris removal, we're asking that uh, we be allowed to be allowed to enter into contracts with the top three scoring, which would be Ashford, um, DRC, and Southern Disaster Recovery. The only one of those that changes from the, the previous RFP was uh, DRC. They replaced Crowder Gulf as one of our backup contractors. Um, but at the end of the day, for us, nothing will change. Ashford will still be our primary. They were the highest scoring, and Thompson's Consulting did our monitoring, and they, would, they still have the um, High school proposal, so we would um, continue to, assuming you approve it tomorrow, we would continue to use the same contract that we did through this past hurricane. But I'd be glad to answer any questions you have about the RFPs. Any questions, Mr. Um So, Ashford, I believe, is from um, Florida, I think Deerfield Beach, um, and Thompson. I mean, I, I'd have to look it up on my but what they what they typically do is they bring in the management like they they bring in their management staff um, and the monitoring firm um, probably uses the most local help because they bring in their management and they basically just hire contract labor so they'll look go out in the community and hire, hire hire local people to do the monitoring and they train them and get them up. The debris removal is a little harder. They try and use if they have their local contractors to have the capabilities they need. But obviously, if you remember the hurricane, they brought those big trucks in, and nobody right here has those. So most of those uh, came from elsewhere as well. How do those contract amounts look compared to what we actually pay? <clears throat> so, I mean, we're I'm assuming the logic is that we get gauged early, we get a big that's price, right. we don't get naked advantage of it. That's right. It's, you know, it's, it's, you, you typically get a better price when you have it at a time. The biggest advantage. Um, that we, we have by having these contracts in place ahead of time in addition to price is the fact that we can mobilize them so much quicker and we don't have to go through the RFP process. So if you remember, um, we actually held Ashford up. We had to get the first responders, but the storm get on Wednesday and by Tuesday they had the trucks in here picking up stuff. Um, and that wouldn't happen if we had to go through a, a contract process after the storm. Uh, not to mention all the other things we got. We don't really have time to issue RFPs. But, uh, pricing wise, our pricing didn't change. Um, you know, Ashford, um, to the best of my recollection, without having gone through every line item, um, the pricing for the stuff that we used, uh, we would use them for, is um, didn't change. And Thompson um, was about the same as well. So, you know, doesn't mean that the price would be the same as all depending on how much debris they pick up. But, but our, you know, we're not going to be paying for per cubic yard or per hour. <coughs> But also with the proper monitoring to make sure that that debris is accounted for, then what we actually get is a higher level of accountability back with FEMA and GEMA from that standpoint of reimbursement. That's right. 
I can tell you, so there are some examples. Um, the monitoring firm, and, and it wasn't that they were, the, the debris removal company was trying to do anything. It is confusing where the boundaries are. But there were some, some times that um, the uh, debris removal, Ashford's contractors, picked up debris that we wouldn't have been eligible for reimbursement because it either was in the city or not in our right of way. Um, and so the monitoring firm picked up on that and basically said, hey, Adams County, don't pay them for those for those loads because you're not going to get reimbursed. So it actually, I won't say that, it, that we got all our money, but you know, a lot, the monitoring, what what they say is paid for a good part of their their contract. That's true. So, good. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Tyler? Thank you.